Hey everybody, looks like we are live. It's so good to see everybody. How are, is everyone doing? Right now there isn't anyone in the, in the live stream yet, but that's because I can't start the live stream uh, preemptively as I could before. YouTube kind of changed uh, their live streaming. So, but I'm waiting for, I'll uh, wait patiently for people to file in. So that is really cool. So I hope everyone is having a good week. So today we are going to be beginning with the uh, third part of Frida Kahlo. And we're going to continue with the large shapes. I mean, I think we did that basically mostly the whole time when working... Uh, in parts one and two, but now we're going to start getting into the small shapes. Oh great Lex, we have somebody here. Patty, great to see you. How are you from Illinois? Steve Lane from the UK. Clutch Pyro. Patrick from Massachusetts. JC from, from uh, Georgia and the Atlanta area. Great to see you, Jesus. And that is so great. Raul from Jersey, fellow Jersey boy. How are you, sir? So that is great. Great to see everybody. So glad uh, you all made it. We made it through another Wednesday. So thank God for that. So I'm pretty excited about today. I have the uh, kettle boiling. So I'm looking forward to having a cup of coffee. I only had one all day. Hey, Mr. Steve Leahy. From Massachusetts, now in Ohio. Great to see you, sir. So that's cool. Paul, how are you? Great to see you, Paul. Paul is from Indiana. Not far from South Bend. Go Irish, right? That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, we're we're having a good time. And, um, you know, with, with uh, you know, Miss Kahlo here. And I'm uh, so excited. Frida Kahlo, uh, basically, uh, she got into a horrific bus accident, and uh, and she was paralyzed for quite a long time, recuperating. And the biography goes is that's when she really started painting. She used her dad's paints, dad's oil paints, and she started. Uh, painting more and more because uh, she lived a rather active life before then and that happens a lot I was a sick kid and uh, I couldn't go out and run with other kids so I would stay home and draw so I could see how how that could happen you know and so it's so important I'm so glad you're feeling better Steve thank goodness for that sir so that's really important um, just take care of yourself. Make sure you get a lot of liquids and all that stuff. That's so important uh, when you're under the weather. That's for sure. So today's uh, topic is getting tight detail with the airbrush. And I think it's important if we can get that tight detail, we pretty much can do anything. Uh, getting that control of the airbrush. Everyone says control of the airbrush. I think a lot of it has to do with learning the aerodynamics of the airbrush, learning about the inverse square law, learning about a lot of the physics, the mathematical physics of what makes an airbrush do what it does. And that's really, really very crucial. Miss Colette, how are you? Great to see you. So glad you're here. So let me take a look at Okay, so the kettle's still boiling, or the kettle is still on the stove. It's not boiling yet because I would be hearing it. We had days of 97 degrees. It was unbelievable. Uh, for about a week, it was really rough. Look at that. I'm out of ink. That was fast, huh? Let's see. I am running out of detail mixture. I just sold a bunch of inks sent them to Europe and so I have to make a new batch tomorrow so that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is making lots of inks lots and lots of inks 
Mr. Michael Loach, how are you? Oh, yeah, but there's very exciting laws of physics, Mike, that is really exciting. Once you learn that, uh, it really is amazing. And we're just going to go ahead and put in my mixture. So I'm doing four drops of detail mixture and four drops of water. making sure I'm getting the detail that I need for this portrait. So what we're going to do is, you know, when I begin, I just sort of chill out and go with the really diluted detail mixture and not make any, you know, real, real uh, hard decisions, you know? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, hey, Mr. Brad Mummery, how you doing? So it's one thing to know the airbrush, but it's one another thing to understand the airbrush. The more that we understand it, my friends, the more that we are, we're going to uh, handle things differently. It's going to be, it's almost like, uh, you know, being a good chess player, but really, understanding certain movements or certain uh, openings and certain defenses and the variations thereof and I think that's so important so so detail is only achieved truly when you understand what it's doing now let's say you don't know about the science of airbrush right and it, so that's okay and someone who is able to get great detail and everything without recognizing the science but if you recognize the science and have that muscle memory then you're then you're truly dangerous you know hold that thought talks among yourselves i will go make myself a cup of coffee i'll be right back So people say, Tim, why would you have a live stream and go make coffee? Well, my live streams are like kind of hanging out with me in my studio. So if you were hanging out with me, I would go get coffee. I would just give you a cup. Alrighty, so it looks like I am back and I have my, hey Mr. Todd, I have my coffee, good to see you. 
French vanilla. French vanilla creamer. Not bad, not bad. Got airbrush, hang out with good people. Good coffee. Let's see. A watch kettle does boil, Steve, it's true. But we don't watch it so closely, right? That's so funny, you know? Mr. Payne, John Payne from upstate New York, great to see you. And of course, Mike Deloach, Mr. Mike is from Atlanta area, which is cool. Okay. Oh, thanks. So Mr. Clutch says it's uh, really amazing how precise the painting is coming. Everything I look at to compare looks spot on. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And so, definitely. So one of the things is like you might say, like Tim, how do you get, how do you get those like really wispy hairs? How do you do that? And a lot of people will say, yeah, just muscle memory and. And that's good, you know, eventually you'll get it if you keep practicing. But it really has to do with lowering the air pressure and uh, getting really close. Because, let's say, let me explain it to you guys. Sometimes when it's explained to you, it actually is much easier, right, to understand. So I'm going to illustrate for everyone including myself so here's our airbrush right of course it's extreme patriot arrow the customized version that's really silly okay so right here is our customized extreme patriot arrow right right there it is here is the paper right so you have a cone of air that comes out and you can see that the cone so let's say this is the paper this is the size of the cone so you're going to get a certain amount of detail uh, with that however if you go closer with said airbrush The cone doesn't have the time to expand as it did here. So you see you have a smaller area. And if you keep going closer, that means that the cone is going to be smaller. And you can see how that works. But there's two parts of this puzzle. The second part is that you can't have the same air pressure that you have here that you have here. So in C, your air pressure uh, might be at 25. And then here it might be at 15. And then here it might be at 10 PSI. So those are things because if you don't, then just like if you have a baseball, and someone throws it at you at five feet, it's going to bounce off your head. And that's going to hurt, and you're not going to be able to react to it. So here, you know, it's, you know, the surface will be able to absorb that, just the way that you can catch that ball, let's say if you're 15 feet away from someone, and they throw the ball to you, you can catch it, you have time to react, you can absorb it. But if, let's say, they were five feet and they just winged it at you, it'll bounce off your head and then you'll be upset once you wake up and all that. Same thing with the airbrush. So here we won't get something called overspray at 15 PSI, but here, if we were at 15 PSI or 25 PSI, we're gonna get massive overspray because it's just too powerful, too close. So those are different things. That has to do, that's the easy part of the inverse square law. So you have to have both the practical and the scientific. You can't go have one without the other to be truly effective. So
so you know I'm just going to always teach straight I always give it to you straight I don't I'm not the kind of teacher that's going to say yeah you know you don't have to do that no because it's going to make you a better airbrush artist and with YouTube today and I'm going to put some videos on it and talk about it more but you can also take my class and learn about this which is to me is really exciting so let me see what people are saying out there So Mike Deloach said it's also important to smooth air channels result in consistent patterns of flow where rough surfaces create vortices. Definitely. So there's a lot of elements and exactly, you know, uh, when you're dealing with aerodynamics, you can just see the difference in uh, plane design, airplane designs, right? For different things, different ways that the wings are are swept back or there's a one wing a delta wing and all these different things there's so many different elements to get the perfect spray for what you're doing right and in a painting you're going to have several different applications in one painting when you're working on the large areas of the hair you're going to want to up your air pressure and be a little further away so you get better atomization, right? And also, you wanna cover a larger area so you're gonna be at a further distance away. So you can see, but if I'm going ahead and I'm working on, let's say, her nostril, then I'm gonna lower that air pressure and then I'm gonna get up close. So two things, back to this. Same thing when you're working on a portrait. Do you have to know anatomy? No, you don't. A lot of people do a lot of great paintings just by, by looking, right? Just by observation. Can you do a better painting? Knowing anatomy and doing great observation? Oh yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's all like what you want in your toolbox. You want to have that in there as well? you know, and that's something that I feel very important, you know. Wow, polishing pads, that's really great, Mike. That's fantastic for polishing those needles, you know. JC says, uh, because if you don't run fast enough, the paint will run for you. <laughs> Oh, what did I? Oh, that was her eye. Yes, that's true. It's important to know the difference between the nostril and the eye. It's very, it comes in very handy when painting the portrait. <laughs> but you want to have that kind of control that you have with a pencil. And we're never going to have control that we have with the airbrush that we have with a pencil. However, we can we can approach that control, right? I lower my air pressure so I can go up close. And with the eyebrows, of course, we want to follow. Follow the grain of the eyebrows, just like grain of the wood, right? You get that correct, it makes a big difference in the impression. So how you been Todd? How's life in San Diego? And I was looking at the her lips a little bit last week. Let's take a look together. Okay, so her lips are three-dimensional forms, remember that. So we're going to paint them as three-dimensional forms first, and then we paint them as lips.
Okay. I'm looking for the subtle value changes as well, which is very, very important. reacting in this way to this particular form. It just gives you the edge, you know, any edge that you can have. It's like I play chess and I know a lot of tactics, right? A lot of tactics of discovered attacks and stuff like that. And, and if you ask me if, if I'm cognitive, of that and you know and keeping that front and center I'm more apt to use that attack right more apt to be more strategic and think about the whole picture So what are these values, like the value here and the value on her nose? What are their relationships? We don't have to have the exact value. We just have to make sure that we have that exact relationship first, which is so important. Always expand your boundaries. It's really important. I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, why is he talking about physics? Because I want you to expand your boundaries. I want you to, uh, you know, understand what's going on with that eye, right? What is, what's happening under the lower eyelid? Why is there this like little half moon shape under that? What is that? Why am I seeing it over and over again? Do you have to know the names? No, you don't. You don't have to memorize the names. You just have to really know the structure, what's causing that. So, Patty, how are you today? It's good to see you. Oh, Mike says he has to go work in the morning, so he's going to call it a night. Uh, see you Saturday, Mike. Thanks so much for your input. Always a pleasure. I know there's a light going in uh, on the edge of her lip there. I'm gonna, I know it's there, but I'm just going to work on the larger shape first and then I'll hit that highlight. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. And we have some softness of edges here, so I'm just gonna soften the edge of her nose here. It's pretty, pretty soft. to her chin, or the mandible, that's the word for it, very soft here, and much darker than what I have, soft edged, right here on the bottom part of the lip.
see it slightly darker right here. Remember, light goes from left to right and top to bottom. So you can see as this lip is facing the bottom, it's going to get more shadow because the light's coming from the top. Remember, we're light detectives. We're not trying to get a likeness. The likeness happens on its own when we do all those other things correctly. information's coming in and you want to be processing that information as you're painting and then applying it and now what we're going to see, see how dark those lips look they're not as dark it's only everything else is much lighter around it so it's sort of that simultaneous contrast thing going on And, you know, it's easy to lose our focus, trust me. And so that's our battle, is to maintain the sharp focus throughout, which is so important. And, oh, Patty, have a great night. Always a pleasure. Don't work so hard. And uh, great to see you. And I love the work that you're doing. So fantastic. understand how the airbrush and why it's behaving as it does is really going to go far with your control. So a lot of people will say, you know, just paint, 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 and then you'll get control. And you will. The more you do anything, you're going to get better at it, right? You're going to be able to manipulate the air, the PSI, and the airbrush and everything to do what you want. However, it is really in your best interest to know about your subject, your materials, yourself. All those different things are going to really, really come into play. And, you know, you want to get to that highest level that you possibly can. There's no ceiling. And that's something a lot of people think. They think, oh, that person's really talented. I can never get there. No, you can get there. There's no ceiling. It's just how much, you know, how badly do you want it, right? And you will amaze yourself if you just go about it knowing that you got this. Hey, David, how you doing, my friend? Great to see you. How are you, sir? So glad to see you, David. David is a really good friend to the channel, and I really appreciate you. So thank you for hanging out. Hey, Blue, how are you? How you doing? I love your warrior woman. That's really good. I really thought that was fantastic, Blue. Really great job. I used to do stuff like that years ago, and it was a lot of fun. It really was. And let's see here. We're just going to continue. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Oh, thanks, Steve. Yes, it's a fun group tonight. Really uh, great energy. I really love that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a a, a, a uh, call at a Mr. Steve Leahy, who's here, his playbook, and I'm not going to do as well as him. I'm going to try. And what I want to do is I want to use the paper shield so I can go ahead and work on uh, this beautiful necklace of hers. I have a better razor blade than the one I have, so we're going to go ahead and uh, tackle that together. 
Whoa, let's see. I got the fan blowing, so it's kind of like a wind tunnel here. Wind tunnels are okay, especially when it's hot. I think it's like 43 more days to the first day of autumn, but who's counting? All right, so here I am. I'm going to go get my razor blade, but first I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Okay, be right back. So, hey Zeus, I went ahead and sent out the project files today. Hopefully they'll get to you by Friday. I sent them UPS, so that usually gets there quick. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, hey Zeus is in my mentorship program. He's doing amazing. We're currently working on uh, Emiliano Zapata, and that's really cool. Oh, and I send you some goodies with that too, so you'll be happy when it gets there, sir. Always gotta, always gotta keep my, uh, my mentorship students happy. So, you know, be, because I'm crazy about my mentorship students. Okay, so let's come over here. Do my best. This is a little dull. So what I'm going to do is I don't have much left here. Yeah, maybe I could bend that just a little bit right there. I think I have a set of pliers. Everyone should have an airbrush tackle box, like I have, and in this airbrush tackle box is everything, needles, uh, valves, uh, all kinds of doodads and gadgets and nozzles and Allen wrenches, so I want to hear you guys in the comments, do you guys have an airbrush tackle box? Even from my Iwata days, look at that, dun dun dun. I want to stop. That was back when I was a kid. Okay, let's put this over here. Now, make sure my cat's not around. I don't want anything flying and hitting my, my little baby. So, let's see. I'm just going to... Okay, that went well. Okay. Tim won. Razor blades, nothing. Alright, let's put this over here. make this happen. Let's see if it makes a difference. Oh yeah, big difference everybody. I don't do a lot of the cutting techniques lately, but, you know, practice makes perfect. You can see with a sharper blade you're dragging the uh, paper a lot less. But I'm still doing it. I know Mr. Leahy says to press down and that works really well. And I can see that. limits, for me, it limits a lot of the, let me get this uh, board out of the way, I don't need magnets, that's much better, this way I can move 
move it around. I think that helps a lot. Now there's a much better technique. If you take my mentorship course, you will I will share a technique that is much more effective than this. But as you can see, it is a bit of a struggle. Pressing down really helps. So one of the things I'm going to be offering pretty soon, if any artist out there wants a website, I will be able to help them with that. And uh, there will be a fee, but it will be a lot less pricey than anything else out there. So that's something to think about. So I already built three websites in the last six months and counting. And I can't tell you how important it is to have a website and how that website will pay for itself. If you want to sell your work, you have aspirations to sell your work, to show your work to prospective clients for portrait commissions, a really good website is really going to help. If you went out there in the real world, not the art world, not someone like me, and said, hey, build a website for me, they'll charge you upwards to thousands of dollars. If you want to do it yourself, then you would have to be like me and probably read uh, so many books that you'll be bleary-eyed. Because I read about four books on the title, I mean on building a website from cover to cover, countless videos, and now I can do it. But I'm crazy tenacious like that, you know? I will not stop until I learn something new. So, if anyone out there is interested in having a website for, or if you do have a website, if you wanted to uh, have one that looks professional, just let me know. Inkflingers.com, you just uh, go ahead and go to the contact us and I will get that information from you and we can see what we can do to work together. It's really about, you know, surviving as an artist. You know, it's not easy. And I love, you know, that whole saying, it's like, okay, now you're an artist, what are you gonna do for a living? And then I say, what are you going to do if I smack you, right? That's what I feel like saying when someone says that. You know, we can, it's up to us if we want to embrace, you know, we want to embrace the practicality of being an artist. And we are marketable, but we have to market ourselves. There's not going to be some content marketing fairy that's just going to come and say, Hi, I'm going to help you, you know, I'm going to help you to uh, uh, sell your work and to uh, treat, teach you how to treat your art as a business. Well, no. They'll quietly say, oh, that's really nice, but you can't make money on art, you know. Uh, you can't make serious money on art. And I think it's a struggle, but 
if you are using the proper tools, I think it's doable. But if you're, I went to the best art schools in the United States, and I'm not even exaggerating. I went to the High School of Art and Design. I went to uh, the Art Students League. I went to the National Academy School of Fine Arts. Not once did they teach about the business aspect of art. And what's the business aspect of art? How to pay your gas and electric bill by being a full-time artist. And that's something that I share with my mentorship program students. I share that with them. And that kind of stuff is included. So it's not just, you know, someone's my mentorship student that, okay, you know, I'll teach a technique and then that's it. No, I'll teach people about content marketing, about doing market research. Where does your work stack up? How much should you spend on on promotion? You know, is it a good idea to build a website? How deep do you want to go? Is it important to you? You know, you a lot of artists haven't even asked themselves that question. You know, you got good. You know, you're really fantastic at this whole painting thing, but you really never ask yourself the question. Do you want to go pro, right? Is this a hobby? And if it's a hobby, hey, that's cool. I'm right there with you, you know? I I mean, that's great. But if you want to be a professional and you want it to be a business because art is a business, then there's, hey, Roy, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm unable to send those uh, emails with the with the link on them because now uh, YouTube does not allow me or I'm sure everyone else to schedule a live stream. At least with my software. Let's see how this goes. I don't. No, it isn't going to be totally successful, but we'll find out the hard way. So yeah, so I built from scratch the Inklingers website, Inklingers.com, and then from there I brought back to life paintingglyphs.com for my pastels and so you know two different mediums two different websites different collectors you know I remember back in 19, 1998, I built my own website using HTML. But I didn't stick with it, you know? I mean, I always had a website with paintingglyphs.com, but I didn't stick with it to fully monetize uh, building websites. And I should have because, you know, an artist needs an artist to understand what they're looking for in a website. You know. The quality of the images are always important to artists, us artists, right? Let's see if I can pull this off. Okay, so this comes out here like this and then goes along her neck. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, so let's see what I've been uh, missing here. 
Uh, take care, Jesus. Always a pleasure to see you. John Deakman, how are you? Good to see you. I'll be right back, guys. And we'll go for the second portion of the jewelry. Okay, Tim is back, and this time it's personal. And let's uh, move this young lady, beautiful Frida, over here. And let's bring our board back over here. B-O-A-R-D, not B-O-R-E-D, that's for sure. And here we go, Frida. Here we go. Lighten it up. Lighten her up just a tad. So I had some amazing teachers in art, in literature. I had amazing teachers. I had senseis in karate. Um, just real life-changing individuals that I was so blessed to study with. And um, kind of likened to a story of the lobster, right? And Mr. Leahy is uh, in and uh, Mr. Mr. Patrick and Mr. Lay here in Lobster Country, right? You, you guys, definitely. And um, a lobster uh, gets to the point when they're uncomfortable that they're growing and they're actually too big for their, their shell, their limitations, and it's getting too crowded. And they get so uncomfortable that they they need to get out of that shell so they could expand and grow. Otherwise, if they were never uncomfortable, they would stay the same size. So, and I always felt that my best teachers were the ones that made me uncomfortable on purpose. The ones that uh, kept me from from getting complacent and saying, you know, this feels good. I kind of like this. I, this is great, right? And um, and it was so important that they did that and made me feel uncomfortable and pushed me and and made me expand my boundaries like the lobster so I can grow. And the funny thing is, once you grow, you're like, ah, oh, that feels good. But it's only a little bit of a respite until the next time, uh, you know, you're ready for the next size shell. And even with my live streams, but especially with my mentorship program, my mentorship students, they can tell you 
that I'm making them do things that they never knew that they could learn, things that they never thought of, you know, and why would that have to do with art? And that's so important. Uh, it's, it's so important to get there. Uh, <laughs> Clutch says I went to smack someone. Steve says, nice scalpel work with the snap blade. You got me beat there. Oh, no. You are the master, Steve, when it comes to... Um, I'm always inspired by Steve Leahy's uh, razor blade work. I don't think there's anyone better out there. I know he's... Steve Leahy is uh, definitely uh, very modest, but he is the best when it comes to that blade, amongst many other things with his art. So, you know, head and shoulders... Uh, up there, you know, just really amazing, and, oh, and, uh, oh, and, uh, I don't trust the snapping of the blade either, you know, that's, uh, really scary, and, oh, wow, look at that cod oil, right, that's really good. And Clutch says that you get more meat from spring soft shell, soft shell because they need to molt that sucker off to grow more. Late fall hard shell you get ripped off because that shell is half empty. Oh man, I can understand that. That's really cool. So, yeah, uh, Mr. Patrick is a, a chef and a very, very, very good one, by the way. And I love that most of us who are in the arts, we have a lot of different talents that we bring that we can actually use to our benefit, which is really exciting. So I'm going to start, and I am going to come over here, make sure I have the, the edges, right? You always want to have the edges, um, the magnets right up close to the edge. So we're going to start right here. And I'm just going to just start working on some of the shapes here. But I don't want any overspray, so that's why I went through all that trouble. See, we're going to get some nice detail, but we're not going to get overspray. And we're going to have some nice hard edges with that jewelry. Two different things that are really going to go a long way. And just creating some nice balance of hard and soft edges. But not arbitrarily, just, you know, really looking at where those hard and soft edges lie. We may have to adjust because the paper did get uh, dragged a little bit. Hey Nick, how you doing? Great to see you. How's everything? And Nick says, do you ever uh, use lapping film to keep the edge sharp longer? I do use uh, uh, different things I use. Great question. I use frisket film at times. I also use uh, uh, acetate, you know, so, you know, whatever, whatever the job entails, you know. I could have went the other way, you know, made an acetate uh, shield, but yeah, it's, it's cool, you know, there's different ways of doing it. You could just do the freehand shield thing, but then again, it's a little risky. You can, with the freehand shield, actually have it backfire, and then all of a sudden you have this uh, kind of off, 
you know, overspray, kind of yucky overspray thing happening. And I'm just going to continue moving around Nick, you know. If I, you know, it's really intense right now. If I miss any of your questions, please uh, just uh, ask them again. You know, I don't ever want to ignore anybody. So you see, I'm getting some of that, and even though it's a small bit of detail, I mean, you know, think of it as a supporting actor. You don't want, you know, those actors hanging around Keanu Reeves who are really horrible, you know, overacting and just making a mess of it, right? You want him to be surrounded by incredible actors. even though they have small supporting parts. And the same thing with something like this. You don't want to run out of gas when it comes time to the accessories of a painting. You want it to support, you know, to support and help that painting along, right? You know, help the eyes, nose, and mouth that we work so hard to get that everything correct. And you don't want some weird cattywampus looking jewelry, right? Hey, that's a word I learned today. Cattywampus is actually a word in the English dictionary. I always thought that was a funny word, you know, uh, like a, you know, like a fake word, but cattywampus is actually a word. And that means a skew. So my after my senior year in high school and before the summer of my of the before I went to my freshman year in college, I worked at the AMP supermarket in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, and I was in the fish department. And when those lobsters would come from Maine and different parts of the New England area, sometimes they would not have the band and they would try and get you. And that was always scary. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting an idea, you know, I'm not gonna go super detailed, but basically I just want to have a base so I could, you know, go over different values and everything. And I'm not going to go too far with this, of course. So, let's see. So, now I could lift this up. So now we have a pretty good basis to work with, and I could always get more uh, individual with that later, but now I have that all set. So another thing is, um, she has kind of a weird background thing going there, and I may keep it, I may not. That's all to be determined. It may be more distraction than anything else, but we'll figure that out as we go. So let's see. Ah, 
Steve, Mr. Steve, have a great night. Always a pleasure, my friend. And say hi to Tilly for me. That's uh, Mr. Steve's granddaughter. She's quite the artist. Uh, Steve and his granddaughter did some amazing artwork. So that is a, that is so cool. I love to see that. Oh, uh, Steve, feel better, my friend. Take it easy. Have a lot of tea. Keep the liquids in you and uh, keep them coming inside you and just take it easy. And, uh, you know, you're like me and you probably would always want to work through it when you're not feeling good. But the best thing you can do is not to do any artwork and just take it easy. That's what I do. So I hope you feel better, sir. And thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate it. So, let's see if I can get rid of some of these pencil lines. I like using this knock eraser by Tombow. It really is nice and soft. Ooh, where's my airbrush glove? Oh, Nicholas said he was talking about uh, airbrush. Oh, about blades. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know too much about, you know, the blade things. Uh, I pretty much... Uh, one of my friends, Ray, he was one of my first students in 2018 with, working online. And he used this like, a, you know, like a maestro. And that's why I tend to use this because of Ray. Uh, and he taught me a lot of really good uh, cutting techniques, so that was cool. And I think Ray learned a lot of that stuff in woodworking and stuff like that. See how it's hard to focus? A little bit of photography information. If you have your uh, aperture, like Let's see here if I can show you. See how my aperture is 2.8? That means that uh, the focus is a very, very minimal uh, shallow depth of field. But if I go ahead and raise uh, my aperture, my f-stop, and then what I could do is I could uh, lower my shutter speed to get the same value. But what happens is now when I go to focus, uh, I have much more room to focus. It, the depth of field is not so shallow. So now you can see how much easier it is to get sharpness. And while I'm here, see if I could... Now I'm at 25, uh, 1 25th of a second. That's pretty slow, but the camera's not moving, so I can live with that. Okay, great. And let's see. Okay, so you see I went ahead and erased this here. So as you go, think of pencil lines as... Think of it as uh, training wheels, right? So you don't take the kids' training wheels when they don't have balance because then he's going to, you know, drive into a mailbox. So you don't want that to happen. So that's why it's so important to not get rid of your training wheels too early. Keep the drawing for as long as you need it. Keep those pencil lines there for as long as you need them. Now why don't I go in with an aggressive eraser? Because I'll tear it up. So that's why I have to have this soft... You have to go with the least aggressive eraser that you can for the job. If you have to get more aggressive, by all means do it but you want to get least aggressive because the least aggressive you are, the less you're going to damage the paper. And those of you who have worked with paper, damaged paper is definitely not fun. So thank goodness it's 77 degrees here in sunny New Jersey, just outside of New York City, and does that make a difference? Um, it was like 94 degrees the other day at this time. And it was hard, you know. It was really difficult to maintain focus in the studio with that kind of temperature. 
And at that kind of temperature, those wall units don't work. That's for sure. Okay, so, let's see if I can just move this over. Okay, so there's a nice soft edge over here. You see I got rid of that. And let's go ahead and work on that part of her neck. So you're always setting up, right? You're always setting up. Setting up for the next stage. Sun Tzu, the art of war. Every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. So your preparation is key. So I'm coming here very softly. And we have some really small little hairs that we can work with. And again, how do we get those little details? We go close. Because that cone is really small. And then we get those little tiny little details. And you can lower your air pressure just a little bit to keep from any kind of spidering. See that? And I could get the tiniest of little tiny baby hairs that are on her neck. And while we're here, let's work on the details of her beautiful earring. She wore amazing jewelry. She loved her jewelry, her Mexican jewelry. She definitely loved her culture. See, so we can go right in there with the tightest of detail. Hey, Nameless, how you doing? So glad you're here. Uh, it's okay. We don't care if you're late as long as you make it. That's all that matters, sir. And I'm glad you're here. So that's cool. And um, okay, let's continue making this happen. See, as I'm really close and I lowered the air pressure and I have an airbrush like the Extreme Customized Extreme Patriot Arrow, this is no problem. Would this be a problem with other airbrushes? Oh yeah. Especially if they're not tuned up like the way I tune them up. Keep things on the abstract, right? Don't see it as a necklace or an earring. See it as its large abstract shapes. And that will help you. It helps me. Yep, let's go back down. We're working on this detail here. Now when you're doing the one second rule, you want to make sure you're not pulling back on the air. So you're looking and then you pull back on the trigger. You can have the air down, but please make sure that the air is not, I mean the trigger is not pulled back when you're looking. Because you're not looking where you're spraying, then that kind of one second rule will be worse than if you didn't use it. So make sure that we're not you know, spraying and not looking. And let's see. Um, 
Nameless says his first period teacher sure didn't think it was okay. He used to make him stand in front of the classroom and write, I'll never be late for first class period again. Oh my goodness. Did you get better penmanship because of that? Okay, so you see how I could start with all of the abstract shapes here and then it'll come together. So let's zoom out and see how it looks. See now that earring has a lot more feeling of light and shade, right? It's kind of coming uh, out from, it's actually coming out from above her neck here. So you can actually see that it has a shadow. It's casting a shadow. All these different things. Remember, a lot, a little thing on its own doesn't make a difference, but a lot of little things done right, that makes a huge difference. Very nice. So let's see if we have any shields here. So we can start putting in some darks here on her neck. You know, we're always, we're always building up slowly. We're not in any rush, right? We're taking it easy. And there's plenty of time to go in with, you know, tight detail. Plenty, plenty of time for that. Okay. And we'll put this paper shield here. I want to get some really nice hard edges without any kind of overspray. I'm not worried about the overspray on on here. I'm not worried about it. But I can put that uh, positive of the necklace on there if I decide I don't want to have that overspray. Let's see, do I want to do that? Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it's worth it. If you can avoid overspray, by all means. Right? Keep it clean. Keep it clean. That's important. Oh, it sure did not. Thought it went big enough, but had to do it less. Oh, man. So that's not good. You know... Discipline is, is important, but not to the point of making you do something that is just going to give a bad taste in your mouth for something cool as writing, you know? That's old school. Kind of stupid the way they kind of did that, the teachers. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and let's work on this edge here. I just want to darken up the hair a little bit. And, you know, and I always say, you know, make sure that we don't cut any corners. Because it's tempting, right? Isn't it tempting to cut the corner? I mean, for me it is. I'm tempted, I'll be honest with you. Extremely tempted. But we're going to put this back here. And you see how this really is helping us. Papow. Yes. Nope, this is not what I wanted. Let's come over here. This might be a better freehand shield all over. And yep, that does much better. So let's remove these. So as you can see, detail, achieving detail is not some, you know, talent thing. You know, talent has a part of it, but you can develop your talent. What it does, what you do need is the understanding of how an airbrush works. You know, why do you get spidering when you go too close? Why do you get overspray? Why is it that, uh, you know, when you're really up close, everything's so hard edges and, you know, maybe you want a soft edge. What's happening? 
those are things that are really going to pay dividends for you. And that's what today's live stream is about. How do you get detail? A lot of people don't like the answer because it's not like, you know, there's no tips or tricks or anything like that. You know, it's pretty much, you know, there's no tricks. There's tips, but really no tricks. But a lot of it is knowing the mathematics of it, you know. Why is it more intense in the center of your cone, your spray cone, as opposed to what's around it? Why, right? It not just tell you, but actually know why. You know, know the science behind it. It's so important. And those are the things that a lot of times... Now, my teacher didn't teach me about the science of, of art. You know, I studied with Harvey Dinnerstein, amazing painter. Yes, he told me about anatomy and told me about a lot of different things. But he didn't go into the science of it. But I'm the kind of person who loves science, and that's why I can bring that into, into my, my classes. And I'm going to raise the air pressure, right? Why do I raise the air pressure? Because I want atomization and coverage, and I want it to be less blotchy and more of an overall beautiful, uh, beautiful coverage. So you have to do two things. You have to raise your air pressure at your pack valve. This is one of another reasons why I really love this airbrush for beginning artists. Because of this pack valve and the fact that it has a 0 .30 needle nozzle combination. And that allows you to get tight detail. But when you need it, what can you do? You can come here and you can get these really beautiful gradations, right? You can, you can do large areas just as well. And to me, having that versatility in one airbrush makes a huge, huge difference. So, if you're interested, uh, there's a link in the description uh, how you can purchase the Extreme Patriot Arrow, the customized version of by, my, by me. And it's actually one-third the cost of a custom micron. So, uh, definitely consider it. It will help you with your control, and that's something that, you know, I'd be wonderful, I'd be very happy and honored to make an airbrush for you, customize that for you. So you see I'm about four inches away, but I'm not just arbitrarily painting, right? I'm actually looking and doing the one second rule, right? I'm not just, you know, blah, 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 thinking about, you know, what I'm going to get at the supermarket tomorrow. My head's in the game, right? It's important that your head is always in the game. And I'm maintaining hard edges where there are hard edges. And keep going. So let's say I'm not sure about this contour. Am I going to just make it up? No, I'm going to really pay attention. And that's what I mean by having your head in the game. It's very important. The way that I teach here is how I teach in my mentorship program. You're getting an overall education, art history, uh, the science of light, the science of aerodynamics and the airbrush. The, uh, what is the proper PSI? What is the proper viscosity of the ink or paint that you're going to be working with? What's your application? not just tell you, oh, go at 25 PSI, have a good day. No, to explain why. And that's what's important. While working on a project, so, and on the hours that, that you're available, right? Uh, it's not like, you know, you have to uh, do a weekend workshop or anything. No, you could, we could have your class, one-on-one -on -one class on a Tuesday at 7 in the morning. We can have that class on a Friday at 9.30 in the evening. And if your availability changes, it's not like you're, you know, out in the cold. I work with you because I know where, how important it is uh, to continue your studies, but you do have life going on. 
So to say, you know, okay, you have to take my class during this time, I don't think that's uh, fair to you. And so this is a great way of you having consistent practice and consistent instruction from one month to the next, only $100 a month. Think about it. You have working with me consistently for two hours every week, one on one. And I use Google Classroom, and it is just amazing. And it is amazing because I see my students and how they grow. And I see the work that they do on their own, and I see the work that they do on, with me, and how they're growing in both ways. So it's it's amazing as a, as a teacher because I had to go to the classroom. There's no such thing. I'm old, right? There was no such thing as online classes. But how great would have that have been, you know? Uh, when I moved to Florida, I would love to have continued studying with Harvey if it was online. But that wasn't even invented yet. So that's, you know what you have available to have someone like me having eight years of art school and I'm not just going to teach you how to airbrush but I'm going to teach you how to grow as an airbrush artist and how to take that to the next level incorporate mediums and different things that you bring to the table such as Patrick Patrick's a chef my goal is to teach him how he could take his knowledge of recipes and apply that to his art and that's what I really love to do. Brad is a student of mine. He's a master woodworker, and we're using his knowledge and what he brings to the table. Colette is an amazing, accomplished photographer. We're using that to bring to the table and how that could help her as an airbrush artist and a pastel painter. So that is really crucial. So those are things that I help I bring to the table. And I look forward to that. And Nameless says, Tim, talk to us three, uh, talk to us the hair in more detail. One of the projects I'm working on involves hair. I want to improve, oh, definitely, my pleasure. So basically, when we're working on hair, my friends, we want to think of the hair as a helmet, right? It's a helmet first. So we're not think we're thinking of the forest, right? So. First you work on the forest, and then you can work on the trees, right? So if I'm working on the forest, then I'm just looking for the big shapes. These individual hairs, I ignore them for now. And then as we, you know, go down the line, then we could, as we build up and do some layering, we can actually go ahead and uh, work on our hair. Now, sometimes you get lucky and the hair is very simple in some poses. And in Frida's case here, uh, her hair is very simple, meaning that the lights and darks, there aren't many stray hairs going on. She has nice, neat, beautiful hair. But we're definitely going to draw the paint the helmet together. So yeah, work on the large shapes first. But when you work on the large shapes, Nameless, you don't want to just go ahead and block it in. No, remember we do the grain of the skin and we do the grain of, of like in the neck area and we do the grain of the eyebrow, right? We gotta know what direction it's going. Same thing when we're painting hair. We have to really take in consideration the grain of the hair. It's so important and it's more important than anything to get that direction because that direction is really going to make a big difference. I want to maintain this hard edge on the ear so we don't have to go ahead and have, you know, uh, we can just do some freehand shields here. See that? We can maintain our hard edge. And as we do this, right, it looks like we're not doing anything, but when we're layering that dark color over the lighter colors and everything like that. We're building hair texture eventually. Because remember, we're not just painting the hair arbitrarily, we're also looking at the grain of the hair nameless, right? So always remember that. And then after we get the large shapes, then we're gonna start looking at the edge work, right? What's happening 
what's happening at the edges of if some area is hard some area is soft those are the things that you know will really add up to really uh, help you to get to that next level when it goes to hair so remember simplify the hair first and uh, you're gonna be okay oh, that's my painting I gotta go ahead and put that away or put her for sale uh, had a lot, lot of fun painting this picture really good But here's a very good case in point. Let's look at uh, Kim Novak here. Kim made her an appearance. So you see the hair, right? This hair is very complicated. And so if I was to attack this hair by going into individual hairs, I would have been overwhelmed and I would have made the hair look crazy. So what I did and what my thinking was when I worked on this was to start with the helmet, you know, and so just the large shapes that the light is coming from above and slightly to the right. So everything uh, from above is going to get the light and you can see how uh, we can look at that and see where those lights are really powerful because they're facing above and slightly to the right but everything to the left and below is actually getting most shadow, right? And so you can see that we're getting shadow over here, we're getting some shadow over here because the light's up here, right, in this direction. So I worked on those large shapes and didn't think about any of the individual hairs just yet, right? When you're working on the forest, you're not worrying about leaves or bark, you're worrying about the forest, the large shape, once you have that all taken care of, then you can go in. Now, when we're talking about the importance of direction, let's just go ahead and look quickly at her lower eyelashes. Very tiny little baby detail, right? But if we look, it wasn't as important as the size of that hair eyelash, but it was more important to get the direction. If that direction was off, it would have changed everything, the anatomy of her. So those are real keys. So I'm really hoping, and then as I started building and I got the large shapes, then I can slowly work on the smaller shapes. And then the smaller shapes and the smaller shapes and then the edges and then the lights and the darks and all of that. And then it really comes together. But you can see how Kim Novak's hair is much more, I won't say complicated, complex than Frida's hair in this pose, right? So uh, always go for the forest and then the trees. So in the case of the hair, always paint the helmet. That's always gonna help you, always, always. So let's put this here. I don't want any overspray on her face. So we'll just put this here. Cleanliness, right? So one of the things, you know, coming from airbrush, coming to the airbrush from the pastel oil painting world, one of the things I really didn't like about airbrush was the overspray. You can always tell like uh, airbrush painting that kind of had that weird overspray. And it was terrible, plus the blue shift, right? When you see those blue shift in airbrush paintings and you're like, oof, that's not good coming from different mediums, but when I saw the great work that everybody does in the airbrush, it really, it really helped me realize that cleanliness was everything, and that's what separated the uh, good airbrush artist from the great airbrush artist, was that cleanliness. So that's why I always take extra time when I'm airbrushing to get that cleanliness, achieve that. And, uh, Yes, and you know what, those individual strands, so Nameless says the individual strands get him, uh, really get him stumped. And I think the individual hairs come way later because they're just in the way, right? You don't need to worry about them just yet. When you develop the lights and darks, you're gonna kinda get rid of them. So they come at the very end of the painting. And Nameless says those eyes are beautiful with Kim Novak. Thank you, sir, I really appreciate it. Someone might ask, Tim, why don't you just go ahead and go in with the, um, 
you know, just just go ahead and go in with the white pastel and really develop things. No, because we have to develop things together, right? We want to paint the ensemble, and and that's the way I work. So you're on my live streams. You're getting to see my inner workings of how I was trained with Harvey and how important it is. So remember, when you take a class with me, you're getting all those years of art school that was quite exclusive back in the day, and now it just isn't available. I mean, I'm sorry, you're not, you're not going to get that kind of education that was available back in the 80s, that I was so blessed that my parents, my mom and dad, and my brother Kevin really helped me to achieve. My brother Kevin's five years older than me, and he was working, and I was going to art school, and I and I got a, an a, a merit scholarship, but I definitely couldn't afford the car fare. It was a bus and two subways each way, and he actually paid the money, you know, a large portion of that car fare, and then I waited tables that night to pay for it, but, you know, I'm so thankful of that, but also I'm thankful because now as a teacher, I can give what other teachers can't. I offer something very distinct to the table, is all those years of practical study, but all those years of studying anatomy, all those years of taking art history classes and knowing about the great painters and how the knowledge of the great painters can help your work. So, and I know I can charge a lot more for my mentorship program, but for me, I want, I want my students to be able to afford things like a digitizing tablet and other things, uh, better airbrushes and stuff like that to really help their growth. So, um, you know, learn about, learn about marketing your work, learn about uh, website design and all that other stuff and digital art. And that's what I bring to the table and I'm very happy that I'm able to. Can I go darker with the hair? Of course. But I can't do that. I can't bring the hair to its correct value just yet because it would throw everything off. And I don't want to throw everything off, so I have to keep things going together. So yeah, some people, subtractors of my style, might say, oh, Tim, you have, why in the world you have part eight and part nine? Because you don't rush it. You know, you, you have a program, you have an approach, a strategy, and you don't veer off of it because you want to finish it quick or someone else wants you to rush it. No, you basically, you, uh, you go ahead and complete what you started with the same strategy. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. Each painting is its own entity. Each painting is, uh, you know, you can't treat this like my last painting and say, well, this should be much faster because my last painting was faster. No, this is a whole different ball game. And so we're constantly, uh, constantly having new frontiers. Every time we do a new piece, there's something different, something distinct about this painting that's going to kind of perplex you a little bit or maybe slow you down because you have to see things differently because this portrait of Frida is very much different than the painting I was doing of Raquel, right? Not better, not worse, just different. Different pose, different emotion, all those different things. And you have to take into account for that. So go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you want to subscribe to this channel. Those that are here right now, those who are watching it in tape delay, subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon because this way when I have a new live stream or I do a video uh, you know a regular recorded video on several topics that will be good for you you'll be alerted and you won't miss it 
you can always watch it, you know, delayed and recorded, but it's a great opportunity for you to go ahead and uh, ask questions, right? And get more information and uh, hang out with the community, the great community we have here. That's that's so very, very important. And um, same thing with the live streams. Every live stream is its own entity, right? If I look at my live stream compared to last live stream, that's ridiculous because this is a is a different chemistry, it's a different group of people, it's a different day, it's a different temperature. Uh, all those different things. So I can't say this was a good live stream. This was a bad live stream. No, it's basically this is the live stream And I think that's one of the wonderful challenges of doing live streams is That it's live anything could happen, right? Um, and that's very very interesting and it keeps you on your toes, right? So let's take a look and see how the hair how it's working but more importantly, we can see how the whole strategy of keeping things clean is really going to help us. So right there you see, nice and clean. And you know, you might not even notice the big changes. But there are, the changes are gradual, but eventually they do become big. And now I could come in and start doing some, some of the trees a little bit. Right? We could look at some of these harder edges here. Now, what I mean by the hard edges now is just getting some of these edge work between the, the light, the mid-tone, and the dark. So before, large shapes. Now, getting some, some of the smaller shapes. But you're working from large to small, right? It's important to keep that that going. Still perpendicular and not parallel, right? Make sure you wipe off your freehand shield before you go back. You don't want to reposition ink. And now I could work on some of the border here between the hair and her temple, side of her head, right? Now the great thing working with my airbrush and the ink, you get a lot less tip dry. And you can see we were working now, going on two hours. And I think this is the only tip dry that I basically got so far. And let me zoom in here. See that? And it's not even an intrusive tip dry, right? It's not even something that gets in the way. But you can just go like this and then you're back to where you are, a nice clean tip. But the amount of, uh, you know, problems with tip dry and my Airbrush India inks are minimal compared to working with acrylic, minimal. And the more you airbrush, the more you're going to just sense when you have a little bit of tip dry. You're just gonna feel something a little bit different. There we go. And let's work over here. Pretty soon we're going to be getting rid of some of the pencil lines up here. But there's no rush. Okay, so I'm starting to really feel her. She's uh, coming together. Let's do some of these individual hairs over here. If 
But like I said, just be patient. Enjoy the trip, you know. No worries, you know. Don't try and and don't get anxious that it's not happening fast enough. There's no points for speed, right? No one looks at a painting and that isn't that good and say, yeah, but it was done in an hour. Nobody cares. They only care about, and that's all you care about, that you did your best and you didn't cut any corners. Again, I'll lower my air pressure and go right up close. And you can see how the detail that we can get with this airbrush. Don't forget to hit that like button everybody. I appreciate that if you can. So no one's talking. I hope that's a good thing that you know the you're enjoying the the technique I hope. Um, you know I take these uh, live streams very seriously and I want to share I always want to share some of that New York City uh, art school education with you so right here we have a hard edge and if I'm looking over there oh thank you clutch I appreciate that and so you see we have this hard edge and this is something I talk about a lot in my classes those are my students out there you know that I'm like, we got to get rid of that edge, right? That's, uh, now I don't want to go super hard edge with this Venus uh, 605B. I'm going to go more with this one. Uh, I forget what the name of it is, but this green one, it, it's a lot less ag aggressive. So what I want to do is I want to obliterate that edge. So. My thing is to basically uh, go ahead right on that edge and kind of uh, destroy the border between the hair and the neck. I'm going to do that all the way down because it's pretty soft edge over here. And we're just going to continue. Precision, right? You want to be as precise as possible. Even though you are might be doing some of the more larger areas like we were doing in the hair, you always want to have that precision. You know, you always want to make every mark mean something, right? Just like when you're a writer. When you're writing something, every word means something. In the case of Patrick being a world-class chef, if he puts in an ingredient, that ingredient means something, right, Patrick? And, uh, you know, I learned so much from Patrick. He's taking my classes, but I'm also learning about how to make my potato salad better. And he's helping me. And uh, it just goes, you know, we can bring every anything that we're doing. If you raise kids, you can bring that to your table, to the table of, of uh, airbrush art. That's exciting. To me, that's exciting because I have so much to learn from everybody and anybody. And, and I could apply that to my disciplines in my life. And that's important, you know? Oh no, very true, uh, Mr. Patrick, definitely. Oh, Nicholas says, pinstriping and taking notes when I learn something new. Yes, definitely, so true. And the pinstriping, that's a great technique and a great craft. And you could take that and apply that to your, to let's say you're doing portraits or something, because it's up to us to figure out how we can connect the dots, right? And we can connect those dots. And Nayla says he noticed that too, was about to ask who, who passed away, and I thought chat was just frozen. Quiet night. Yeah, and I think everyone is, uh, you know, like I said, uh, nameless, every live stream is just its own entity, you know, its own life, and, you know, never, never want to say, you know, this air, this live stream was better than the other, you know, I always try and, uh, you know, enjoy the process, you know, I do, I do recorded videos as well, but live streams are just so much more exciting, and I get to know everybody, and we create a community, and that's what I love. And even if just four of you are here, I'll enjoy it. <laughs> you know, I'll enjoy just four of you. 
and if there's 24 or 26 in the chat, I'll enjoy it, you know, and I think that's great. Um, when you're doing individual hairs, always be mindful, very important, always be mindful not to be equidistant, right, or parallel, and you see I started doing that, and this is something that I teach, but I have to constantly, constantly push myself to adhere to that principle because in nature very rarely very rarely are things the same size and equidistant you know there's a kind of uh, you know controlled chaos it's kind of a you know a contradiction in terms but if you think of anything that's organic you know our fingers you know our hair you know the the nose on the dog all those different things, the claw of a cat, the branch of a tree, none of it is equidistant and the same size. There's always uh, a symmetry. I mean, there are some asymmetric elements in nature. Uh, I mean, uh, nature is, there are some symmetrical elements in nature, but if we really look close, they do have that kind of, uh, chaotic control. And oh, Paul asks, am I using the medium? No, I'm actually still with the detail mixture, Paul. And that's pretty cool, right? So I'm still working on that detail mix. And um, so I want to push the detail mix as far as I can, as long as I can, because remember, when we have that detail mixture, we have more control. The lighter, so here's another thing. I see a lot of artists and, you know, they work in, let's say, acrylic or something like that. And they just put black in their airbrush. I'm sorry, you're not going to have control. So that airbrush artist just basically took a lot of the control away from themselves by putting black in there. The more that you can reduce something, and still have it maintain uh, its body, then then you're gonna have much more control, much more control. So with my technique of using the India ink ball, you wanna go ahead and uh, push and use the detail mixture as long as possible. Now, if I ever get like little areas that are dark or little problems, my, my inclination would be, okay, I gotta fix that, and I'm gonna fix that now. But I think what's more important is to chill out, assess the situation, and come back to it. Because when we get emotional about something, especially if what we perceive as a mistake, it could really cause problems. And I don't want anything to cause problems with you. Uh, and then, you know, you could sort of go down that rabbit hole, so to speak. Now we have some little, tiny little micro details here. And I just kind of like move around. And you see this, uh, see her beautiful ear here. It's going to really pop when we add the white pastel. But we don't want to do that too prematurely because we haven't made the forms turn yet. If you put white pastel or highlights on a form that's not turning, that you're not making three-dimensional, then basically you're, you're not helping out. You know, you're not helping making your subject believable and giving the impression of being there at that one fraction of a second that that photo has taken. You're actually reproducing that moment Think of it this way, when you're painting from a photograph, you're reproducing that one two hundred of a second that that shutter speed was, was open. And that's your job. So you don't want to go ahead and put in the details before you get the overall impression. 
You know, like when you look farther away from someone, like maybe a block away, and you could see your husband or your wife or your kid, and you recognize them from a block away. Why do you recognize them? You don't see little things like their eyelashes or the color of their eyes. You don't see the freckles. You don't. You see the large shapes, right? And that's how you recognize that person. So the same thing when you're doing a portrait. You want to get those large shapes of how you recognize them from far away. So today I did not look at the clock that once, and um, but I'm just enjoying this live stream, I'm enjoying sharing information with you, and hopefully you can take this and apply it to your work, and in my own way, if I could uh, inspire you to pick up the airbrush sooner than you normally would, then this live stream was a success for me. Don't forget, I'm also working in airbrush, I mean working in pastel. Now if anyone knows me, knows that I was a accomplished pastel painter uh, before I ever picked up an airbrush in like 2010. And uh, so I painted since the 80s uh, in pastel. And I was kind of not doing it publicly, but now I'm actually uh, working in pastel and I have a live stream every on this channel every saturday at 8 p.m come by and hang out and i talk about how air, airbrush and pastel kind of work together and how being an airbrush artist will really help you and maybe get you inspired to pick up the amazing medium of, of pastel and how they're kind of like sister mediums right they work together they really do and we are at 11.23. Ah, Patrick, have a great night. Always a pleasure. And I will see you tomorrow, I think, or Friday. I'm not sure. We'll talk, my friend. And I hope you uh, get to get a restful, beautiful night's sleep, my friend. You deserve it. And so that's cool. And oh, I'm sorry you're not sleeping well, nameless. Uh, try praying before you go to sleep. That helps me. It really does. Uh, so, if it helps me, maybe it'll help you. I actually pray before I do everything. <laughs> because I can't do any of this on my own. That's for sure. I'm basically a mess, but, you know, I do my best, and I show up every day, and showing up is 90% of everything. I always said, you know, I mean, someone said, you know, if you don't enter an art contest, a jury exhibition, so you're basically voting for the winner, right? But if you enter and put your best foot forward, then you're voting for yourself. It's always best to vote for yourself than vote for the winner. And the more shows that you're in, the better you'll get, the more custom, you know, what, you know, what kind of photographs, what size, you know, what are the best shows. Uh, now that COVID's getting a little bit less, I'm going to start entering the shows again in New York City. And I'm going to be entering pastels. Okay, little bit of eraser action before we finish up here. So we have five minutes left. Oh, we give you the two hours on the uh, Wednesday night live stream. So let's work on her beautiful lips. And we're just going to start modeling the forms by gently, 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 gently erasing. And I'm going to use the uh, Mono Zero Round. This is my favorite. Uh, I use it a lot when I'm working on my regular graphite drawings. And you see, it's just like working with a pencil. 
And now I could see these little micro changes here as this front part of her lip kind of faces the light slightly more. And then I can come in with the hairbrush and I can go slightly darker and accentuate that just a little bit. And that makes a big difference. Uh, Mr. Todd says, Tim, what pencil did you use to draw the image? I use a mechanical pencil. My favorite pencil is the Pentel 0.5 PT05. Let me show you. If you don't have one of these, please get one and put F grade lead in there. F as in uh, uh, I'm, doing, I'm running a blank on, on F. F is in foot. Okay. See, live streams. You don't know what, what's going to happen. Let me go ahead and change my ISO to 400 and you'll see how things lighten up. And then I'll go ahead and I could lower, raise my shutter speed. And you see, that's it. You can see it. Pentel P205 0.5. Make sure you put the F lead in there. Uh, that's going to be the best pencil for you. Uh, especially if you're out and about and working and you don't have any uh, a pencil sharpener, it's always going to stay sharp. Uh, thank you, Brad. Says she's coming along quite nicely. Thanks for another great feed. Thank you so much. Yes, Evans and Frank. Def, def, thank you so much for that, Mr. Mr. John. I appreciate that. And John says she looks marvelous. Loves this subject. Yeah, Frida is amazing. Have to say, uh, you know. I wish she had an easier life with a lot less heartache and a lot less uh, pain physically. So I always love honoring her. Oh, we were working on her lips, right? Yes. So let's go back to her lips. We have two minutes left. Great live stream, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. I always look forward to the Wednesdays. They're the anchor of the week, you know. Really are, as far as my art goes. Always look forward to the give and take and your ideas. It uh, means a lot to me. Thank you. So once again, if you want a really good airbrush, there's a link in the description to my Extreme Patriot Arrow. You hit the link, goes to my website, and I'll discuss in that link more of, you know, why you need the airbrush and what it does and, you know, what a great value it is. And so that's really cool. Also, there's a link in the inks if you want to try my India inks. They're on sale. They're 20% off now. And so if you go ahead and purchase those inks, I'll make sure I get a fresh set out to you as soon as possible. And buying the inks and buying the airbrush helps me to give these uh, free uh, airbrush lessons to anyone who comes by. And, uh, and, you know, I love that, but I want to be able to continue doing that, you know, just make sure that my bills are paid and I don't have the stress of finances and everything like that. So buying the airbrush and the inks really goes a long way. Plus you get a better airbrush and that's good. And you get uh, inks that are going to last you forever and not ever for a long time. You're going to be able to do some really great artwork to amplify your talent. That's what this is all about. Everybody, we reached 1130. Thank you so much, Lipmaster. Thank you, Mr. John Payne and Paul. Thank you, guys. Uh, Mr. Air Todd and Nameless. Better late than never, my friend Nicholas and Roy and Brad and uh, everyone who I miss. Mr. John Diekman, pleasure to see you. And Colette and Patrick and Steve Leahy, thanks for hanging out. Uh, it wasn't a huge turnout today, but those who were meant to be here, uh, such as Blue, 
uh, and David Fury and Steve Lang all the way from the UK and Jesus, I mean, uh, Mr. Michael Deloach. Those who are meant to be here, uh, uh, Patty, I love seeing you here in the live streams. And anyone I did forget, I don't think I forgot anyone today. Raul, always a pleasure doing great work over there. So guys, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. It is uh, Wednesday uh, here in New York. So those in the UK, it's already on Thursday. So the weekend's coming, have a great weekend. Don't forget on Saturday at eight o'clock Eastern time, a little more friendly for my UK people. I'm gonna have my pastel uh, live stream. And uh, we're going into some really cool techniques and working in color and seeing color, uh, you know, that you might not see right away. So that's going to be the theme on that. So everyone take care.